Are you ready to think big and act bold? Then you are in the right place. This is Innovative Entrepreneurs, a podcast that will bring you the stories, insights, and tips from some of the most successful and innovative entrepreneurs in the world. I am your host, Erica Bailey, and I am here to help you start, scale, and sustain your own entrepreneurial journey. Let's get started. I'm grateful that you've decided to join me today. I'm going to give you a little information about myself and how I got here. I was born in Arizona, but I grew up in a top of a beautiful mountain in Morrison, Colorado. I was a lucky kid. Right? I grew up with horses and forests and bunnies, and you know, I got to spend most of my time outside. I got to ride horses. It really was a magical world. And then when I was 11, I believe, we moved back to Arizona, and it was my home for quite some time. I decided to go to college in order to keep my parents' uh, health insurance. So I was young at that time, and I, I had gone through my associate's degree at the junior college, and then got married, had a kid, and got divorced. And then I started the rest of my education at Arizona State University, Go Devils, while I was a single mom. The funny part is, is that my mother, she actually was going to school at the same time I was to get her RN and then ultimately her master's, um, NP master's. And so we would switch off, right? We'd bring, you know, my son to school and I'd take him while she was in class and she'd take him while I was in class. And, you know, it was hard. It was hard being a single mother. And then I met my husband, who was also a single father, and our children were only three months different. So we were able to raise them together. Uh, then we got married five years after we met, and we had another baby. And so at this point, we had two older children and an infant. I graduated with my bachelor's in justice studies and social inquiry. At that time, I was working in the mental health industry, providing care to developmentally disabled or mentally ill patients. I worked in the home, and I helped take care of the patients. And ultimately, my dream was to become an FBI agent. Um, I wanted to work in the behavioral health unit. My mom has been in behavioral health my whole life. I believed that they needed better care. So that's what I was going to do. Um, again, I was a single mom. And unfortunately, I got attacked at one of the homes that I was taking care of and kind of made me realize that I think I needed to change pace. So although my bachelor's was in justice studies and social inquiry, I did get my first job at an estate planning firm. I was paralegal. I loved every day. It was really great. I had been there for five years. I continued to grow in my education, my knowledge, and my personal development. And then I wanted a promotion. At that point, I was told that I I was a mother of a young child, and my place was in the room. Yeah, take a second. I was a mother of a young child, and my place was in the home. <laughs> what do you think I did? I'm giving you a second to guess. Say it out loud. What do you think I did? I grabbed my purse, anything personal, and I walked out. I went home, and I applied for my master's degree. My husband came home that night, and I said, I just got approved for my master's program. And he looked at me, and he's like, I didn't even know you were going back to school. He goes, what are you going back to school for? I said, I'm getting my MBA. And this was in 2007 when the housing market collapsed. And in Arizona, the housing market was everything. So this was a huge hit. We were, you know, raising three kids, you know, scraping by. And I go, I'm getting my MBA. <laughs> and we talk about this to this day. He looks at me and he goes, that's just a useless piece of paper. <laughs> Years later, he comes to appreciate it. So ultimately, it was the right idea. So as we were raising three children, my husband was working as a copywriter I was doing some part-time work, working in SEO, so uh, link building, um, you know, blogging, organic SEO, you know, page rank, um, lots of different things. It was kind of the the black hat of SEO back in the day. You now it's definitely grown and changed, but so I was working a little part-time there. He was doing copywriting. We're trying to bring in, you know, I'm going to school online. Um, it was tough. It was a it was a tough year and a half, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, I got my master's degree and we decided because the housing market crashed and we couldn't find work that was 
equivalent to our value. So we decided that we weren't going to just take nothing. And uh, we decided to create our own marketing company. Mind you, at that time, we knew very little. I knew how to work LinkedIn. I knew how to work Facebook. I was actually one of the first people, um, you know, that was on when it launched officially. And, uh, you know, so I knew how to work those. And our first client was actually a pharmaceutical company who hired me to teach them how to use social media during their rebrand. Uh, so that was a wonderful experience. And it made me realize that I, I knew what I was talking about. I was innovative because I taught myself and I was on the way. I was on the way to being the person that I wanted to be. First few years were tough, but we did get clients. You know, we had a few small things here and there. You know, at that time we had inexpensive developers, which obviously equals, inex you know, <laughs> lousy work. Um, so we struggled there a little bit, but you know, Jason was doing the content. He started learning how to do design and logos. He taught himself all the Adobe suite and started design. It was pretty amazing. And at that time, I also had a uh, personal assistant who we taught how to do social media and she has grown in 10 years. It's absolutely amazing. So we ended up getting two referrals and one of those clients is still with us today from 2000 and I think 10, I think 13 years. Yeah. Pretty amazing, huh? That is what you call great customer service. When all of your clients and I do mean all of our clients, I come from referrals. So, you know, I think in a sense that's innovative, right? Because we are, we have made such an impact on the people we serve that they want to share with others that they had good experience. Innovative is defined as featuring new methods, advanced and original, introducing new ideas, original and creative thinking. We had to think creative. We had to feed our children. We needed to figure out how we were going to keep the roof over our heads. So we created something new. We learned, we failed, we failed forward. We picked ourselves up and we failed again. And then we fell forward and we picked ourselves up. And that happened, you know, quite a few times over the first five or so years. I had always had a, a W-2, right? I've always had, you know, I started working when I was 14, by the way. And I had had, jo I had, had jobs since I was 14. Um, and even at that point, I never had to apply. I never had to interview. People just wanted me to work for them. So we were creative. We had to feed the kids. So we had to come up with some new methods of marketing. You know, some big time Madison Avenue agency it wasn't doing. And I think what made us original is the way that we cared for our clients. Each client was treated as though they were our only client. We made ourselves part of their team and we have done that since. But at that point, you know, how we got clients was really through the first one that we onboarded, referrals that he sent. And then we started getting referrals from friends, people that we met. You know, at that time, we had no idea how to market ourselves. Um, you know, all we knew how to do is build relationships. So that's what I started to do is really just build relationships and tell them what I'm doing. And they, you know, because of the relationships that we built, they, they trusted me. They trusted us. And, you know, we never, we never failed them. You know, I said before, we fail, we fail forward. Well, we kind of failed ourselves, um, but we never failed our clients. We never failed our friends. Um, and I think that I think that created a, a value, a sense of value to them. So as we continue to grow, again, it became more and more clients, um, more, mostly small deals. And then we started uh, building, you know, websites. And my uh, my partner, my husband, and it was just amazing what he could do, what he learned to do. He had original and creative ideas. 
And again, he taught himself. So he started designing websites. I met a developer who, again, has been with me for over 10 years, who is phenomenal. So we have a team of developers. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get business. It was amazing. You know, it felt so good. I ended up being the fractional CMO for a childhood cancer nonprofit. And that took up about eight of my years. I gave them pretty much all I had um, and maintained them as, you know, my primary client. That taught me a lot. You know, I had no idea that childhood cancer existed. And although I knew every day I was making a difference, I also knew every day a child was dying. So that was that was a hard job. But in that job, we took a small town nonprofit and turned it in to a nationwide name. We designed billboards in New York and San Diego and all different places. And we were creating these designs that were just phenomenal. And I looked at them and I'm like, that is us. We did that. And during that time, we were, you know, the foundation was offered a free window display the Rockefeller Center during Christmas. And we worked really hard on that window display. And it was so good that they offered us a second year, which has never been done before. And I looked at that window display, and again, I, we did that. We did that. We used new methods, original thinking, and we did that you know, to see your work in Rockefeller Center during Christmas. I think that was probably the highlight of my marketing career, to be honest. Then we moved to Evanston, Wyoming. We went from 120 to negative 20. Most people thought I would lose my mind and I would move back within the first year. Fell in love with this place. It is now my home and we are continuing to do business. It is out of Evanston, but, you know, I've worked wherever I wanted to. Now, the awesome thing about being an entrepreneur is that you do what you want to do and when. It's not easy. You have to work hard. Some days there are 10, 12, 16-hour days, and some days you're sitting on the beach with your kids and it's a Tuesday. You know, you make the decisions you make the choices that guide your life. You are the one that's in control. So I tell all you entrepreneurs out there, congratulations, continue to work hard. There is nothing better than knowing your work, your idea, your vision, and your dream. When you are an entrepreneur, you are fighting for your dreams. You are fighting for your goals. You are fighting for your ideas. And in order to do that, you have to think outside of the box. There's plenty of competition. So you have to be innovative. You have to think outside the box. You have to figure out where your audience is and make sure you are targeting those people. You have to think beyond newspaper ads and signs in the road. I'm not saying those things don't work, but you have to be in it. I have an ob obsession with history, especially American history. The men and women who created this country through original thinking and innovative ideas. We're thinking about some innovative entrepreneurs such as Thomas Edison, Benjamin Franklin, Henry Ford, Andrew Carnegie, those are some of the most phenomenal entrepreneurs and the endeavors that they created these ideas and these dreams while ditching managerial capitalism. To be honest with you, if you look at it, the start of American entrepreneurship dates back to settlers and Native Americans, where they traded and bartered to benefit both parties. You know, then the Western expansion happened and entrepreneurship, created capitalists, innovators, prospectors, financiers who could provide funding to new businessmen, creating startups, 
and expanding pre-existing businesses. And so we're going to talk about a few of these. Let's start with Thomas Edison. He went to school when he was young and one day his teacher sent him a letter to his mom. And, you know, I might be getting this a little mixed up, but the teacher sent the letter to his mom and his mom read it saying that he was an amazingly brilliant young man, that he was too smart for school and that they believed that he would learn more and flourish more if he was able to stay home. Thomas Edison is considered by many, to be the greatest inventor of all time. He created thousands of U.S. patents and, you know, also created electricity the world's first power plant. You want to know what that letter really said? It said he wasn't smart enough for school. Where's the innovation there? His mother created new ideas. She put hope in her son, and she created a abundance of confidence. His mother pushed him and made him the man he became because she believed in him. He did find the real letter one day, but it was way after he became a very successful man. Let's talk about Benjamin Franklin. He was one of the founding fathers as well. And being one of the first entrepreneurs, he created bifoc- bifocal glasses, the Franklin stove, Obviously, the lightning rod. But he was also credited with creating America's first free library. Innovation. New ideas. Creating the American dream. As we push on, you know, let's talk about Andrew Carnegie. His family business collapsed at the time of the Industrial Revolution. Andrew Carnegie started off as a railroad assistant. And he invested his money. And then he went on to create Carnegie steel, which grew into a huge company. He knew what the future looked like through his vision. Anyway, I would choose nothing other than to be an entrepreneur. I believe that my innovative ideas, my out-of-the-box thinking, my silliness and professionalism made me the person I am today. And as we move forward, I plan on interviewing some phenomenal entrepreneurs who really you know, built their dreams from the ground up. And also talk to you about some marketing techniques that you could probably implement into your business that, you know, may help bring more clients to your door. My job here is to provide support to help those who are trying to grow their own business. Our society would not exist the way that it is now without the innovative ideas from people who are brave enough to take the chance and go after it. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Wow, what a great episode. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you want more of this goodness, make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications for future podcasts. And if you found value from this, please share it with others. You can visit our website at cwgdigital.com. This is Erica Bailey. I am your host, and I will see you next time.